In recent months, a flurry of seismic and volcanic events around Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula has coincided with widespread reports that Earth's magnetic field is weakening, prompting some to wonder if the two are related. Over the past 200 years, the field has indeed declined by roughly 9% in intensity. Scientists have long known the geomagnetic field waxes and wanes, and today's field is about 10% weaker than when Carl Friedrich Gauss first measured it in the mid-1800s. This weakening has spawned speculation and media sensationalism about looming pole reversals, solar vulnerabilities, or even a link to tectonic upheaval. However, space agencies stress that the present decline is well within normal geophysical fluctuations. For example, the European Space Agency notes that the current dip in intensity, even amid the growing South Atlantic anomaly, is well within what is considered normal levels of fluctuations and presents no immediate danger to people on Earth. In short, at most, the weakening field is currently an issue for satellites and high-altitude systems, increased radiation exposure not for earthquakes or volcanoes. Still, the timing of the Kamchatka crises has fueled public questions. Could a fading magnetosphere somehow trigger seismicity or volcanic eruptions? The short answer from the scientific community is that there is no known causal link between large-scale magnetic field changes and plate tectonics. Decades of research and monitoring have found no convincing evidence that geomagnetic fluctuations precede earthquakes. As the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, emphasizes, electromagnetic changes are often observed after quakes, but despite decades of work, there is no convincing evidence of electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes. That statement, echoed in scientific reviews, underscores the consensus. Geophysicists have explored every angle, but have not found reliable magnetic alarms for earthquakes. Even research into local magnetic anomalies, such as monitoring at volcanoes, shows only very small, localized signals tied to magma movement, not shifts in the global field. For example, Italian volcanologists monitoring Mount Etna found that changes of just a few nanotesla, billionths of a tesla, in the local field often accompany shallow magma intrusions. But these minute signals, a refrigerator magnet is about 5 million NT, are used to forecast impending eruptions and are not evidence that the overall field strength is driving the volcano. Against this backdrop, it is worth reviewing the recent events in Kamchatka. On July 29, 2025, the Pacific Earthquake Tsunami Warning Center recorded a massive magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake off Kamchatka's eastern coast. The US and Russian seismic networks confirmed that this was a very shallow, megathrust quake centered about 119 kilometers, 74 miles, east-southeast of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky. As one of the largest quakes in modern records, the EMSC reported it as the eighth largest globally ever measured, it sent strong tremors felt across the region. Buildings swayed in Petropavlovsk and nearby towns. Witnesses said it felt like the walls could collapse under three full minutes of shaking. A Pacific-wide tsunami alert was issued with waves up to 5 m, 16 feet, striking parts of the Kuril Islands and minor surges recorded as far away as Japan and Hawaii. Much of the danger subsided within hours as warnings were downgraded by the evening. By that time, however, Something else had happened. One of Kamchatka's volcanoes had already started to erupt. Within hours of the Tembla, Kamchatka's volcanoes responded. In particular, the Klyuchevskoy, Klyuchevskaya, Sopka volcano, one of the world's highest at 4,750 m, 15,584 feet, went into eruption on the same day. Russian geologists observed fiery lava flowing down its western flank, and a glowing plume of ash shooting into the sky. It's important to note that Klyuchevskoy had been active since spring 2025, with fresh lava filling its crater as early as April. The July quake coincided with, but did not uniquely cause, this eruption. Over the following days, even more volcanoes lit up. On August 2nd to 3, the remote Krasheninikov volcano, dormant for roughly 600 years, erupted explosively, sending an ash cloud nearly four miles, about six kilometers high. 
Satellite images captured the towering ash column billowing from Krasininikov on August 3rd. Russian scientists, via RIA and TASS News, explicitly linked this eruption to the seismic shock, noting it was the first time Krasininikov has erupted in centuries and suggesting the massive quake may have reawakened the region's sleeping giants. Even before the July earthquake, Kamchatka's ring of fire had been unusually restless. In April 2025, for example, the Bazimiani volcano erupted powerfully, shooting an ash plume up to 11 kilometers, 36,000 feet altitude. In May, Shivaluk unleashed a high-level explosion with an ash cloud reaching 12.2 km, 40,000 feet, above sea level. And back in January, the Avachinsky volcano, looming over Petropavlovsk, began erupting with explosions that carried ash 4 to 5 kilometers, 2.5 to 3 miles high, showering the city with ash fall some 30 kilometers away. In fact, by midsummer 2025-6, Kamchatka volcanoes had signaled notable activity. Avachinsky, Klyuchevskoy, Bezimiany, Kambalny, Karimsky, and Krasininikov. The Russian Volcanology Institute noted this parade of eruptions was unprecedented in recent history, last seen on such a scale only in 1737 following a magnitude 9 quake. Amid these developments, even more volcanoes appeared primed. Mutnovsky began rumbling in early August, with a satellite thermal anomaly raising its aviation code to yellow, and Kambolny, long quiet since 1979, showed new steaming fumaroles. Amid these natural events, scientists have weighed in to distinguish coincidence from causation. Volcanologists note that large earthquakes can sometimes trigger eruptions, but only when a volcano is already near critical pressure. As Scientific American reported, the USGS cautions that large earthquakes do occasionally trigger nearby volcanic eruption, but only if the volcano is already nearing an eruption with enough magma stored inside undergoing high enough pressure. In other words, the Kamchatka quakes likely acted as a final nudge on several volcanoes already on the brink, as evidenced by thermal anomalies and seismic swarms. For instance, Dr. Alexei Ozerov of the Russian Academy of Sciences said the July 8.8 .8 event activated magmatic centers in the area, giving them extra energy to erupt. Likewise, UK volcanologist Dr. Jonathan Paul explained that such a quake could open deep fissures, allowing magma to rise, accounting for short delays before some eruptions like Krasininikov's. Even so, these experts stressed tectonic stress as the driver. Kamchatka lies on a fast converging subduction zone, so a big quake is precisely the kind of stress change one would expect to influence its volcanoes. By contrast, none of them attributed these eruptions to the magnetic field. In contrast, the idea that the global geomagnetic decline is causing the turmoil finds no support in peer-reviewed science. The leading authorities remain sceptical. The USGS Geomagnetism Program, for example, explicitly asks whether solar flares or magnetic storms can trigger earthquakes, and flatly answers that while geomagnetic storms can induce currents on Earth, electromagnetic variations have been observed after earthquakes, but there is no convincing evidence of electromagnetic precursors. Similarly, a 2022 review in the journal EOS notes that tiny magnetic signals have been detected hours to days before some quakes. But it highlights that such findings are tenuous and emphasizes the USGS stance. There is no convincing evidence of electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes. In volcanology, the only established use of magnetic data is local monitoring. For instance, instruments around Italy's Mount Etna have recorded pre-eruptive anomalies when magma intrudes, but these signals are local and measured in nanoteslas, orders of magnitude smaller than any global change. No current model or study suggests that the steady, slow weakening of the geomagnetic field is unlocking faults or heating magma chambers. To be clear, Earth's declining dipole field is a legitimate geophysical phenomenon, just not one tied to the disasters in Kamchatka. NASA and ESA emphasize that the observed changes, North Pole drift, growing South Atlantic anomaly, etc., are important for navigation and satellites, yet they stop short of any link to ground events. Meanwhile, the seismic gap off Kamchatka, 
on the Pacific Ring of Fire was already a textbook source for large quakes. In recent years, only one magnitude 9 plus quake has occurred in that region in 1952, and clusters of volcanism there are part of its normal cycle. What's unusual is simply that many stressed volcanoes erupted in quick succession, a reminder of how a single major fault shaking event can cascade through a fiery zone. In this context, the weakening of Earth's magnetic field has emerged as a speculative but increasingly discussed variable. While the scientific community remains cautious about drawing direct cause and effect conclusions, some researchers are beginning to explore whether the changing geomagnetic conditions may be subtly influencing tectonic or volcanic dynamics. Earth's magnetic field, which shields the planet from solar and cosmic radiation, is generated by the motion of molten iron within the outer core. This geodynamo has been weakening over the past 160 years at a rate of about 5% per century. Though more recent satellite measurements suggest that certain areas, especially over the South Atlantic, are decaying at a faster rate. Some studies suggest the field may be undergoing a reversal, a process that has occurred dozens of times in Earth's history, though irregularly and unpredictably. A weakening magnetic field does not directly cause earthquakes or eruptions, but it can alter the way Earth's surface and atmosphere interact with external forces. For instance, during periods of strong solar activity, coronal mass ejections can inject charged particles into Earth's magnetosphere. In a weaker geomagnetic state, more of this energy may penetrate into the ionosphere and possibly reach the lithosphere. There's emerging research, still controversial, that suggests these interactions could induce small electrical currents in the crust, potentially affecting fault friction or even magma buoyancy in certain settings. If this connection is real, even if subtle, it could help explain why geomagnetic minima sometimes correlate with spikes in geologic unrest. Some geophysicists have pointed to the July 2025 Kamchatka earthquake as a possible data point in this broader pattern. The quake occurred just one day after a massive geomagnetic storm triggered by a solar flare rated X 9.3, among the most powerful recorded in this solar cycle. The storm disrupted satellite systems and radio communications across the globe and produced brilliant auroras visible as far south as Tokyo and Seattle. Ground-based magnetometers in Siberia and Alaska registered sharp perturbations in the field, suggesting an influx of electromagnetic energy into the high-latitude ionosphere. Though correlation does not equal causation, the coincidence is intriguing. Moreover, several large earthquakes earlier in 2025 seem to occur during or shortly after similar geomagnetic disturbances. In January, a magnitude 7.6 quake struck the Pacific coast of Mexico within 48 hours of an intense polar cap absorption event. In March, Nepal was shaken by a magnitude 7.8 quake, just days after another solar storm. The clustering of seismicity in 2025, especially deep and megathrust events in tectonically loaded zones, has prompted a few researchers to revisit older studies that proposed a link between magnetic fluctuations and lithospheric stress release. Still, many experts remain sceptical. The Earth's interior is governed by enormous thermal and mechanical forces, and magnetic interactions, even if real, may be orders of magnitude too small to trigger major geological events. Yet even this cautious view doesn't dismiss the idea entirely. Some suggest that a weakened field could serve as a modulator, lowering the threshold at which other, more dominant forces operate. If a fault is already critically stressed, or a magma chamber is at the brink of eruption, then perhaps a geomagnetic pulse could be the proverbial straw that tips the balance. It's not that the magnetic field causes earthquakes or eruptions, it may simply whisper at the edges of geologic possibility, pushing already volatile systems toward release. In a nutshell, According to experts and current research, the fading magnetic field is not blamed for the Kamchatka quake or the string of eruptions. Scientists attribute the July 2025 magnitude 8.8 .8 and its aftermath to familiar tectonic forces. As the U.S. Geological Survey and Volcanology Institutes note, time and again we would love to demonstrate magnetic precursors to quakes. But so far, none have been proven. 
Instead, the evidence fits the classic pattern. A long overdue megathrust rupture unleashed seismic energy, and that energy then jostled several volcanoes already primed to erupt. In the weeks that followed, local volcanologists dutifully raised aviation alerts and monitored ash plumes, such as the one reaching 10 kilometers above Krasininikov on August 3rd, but their explanations rooted in magma dynamics, not geomagnetism. Looking forward, researchers are analyzing this unique sequence of events in detail, but the prevailing view is clear. The Earth's magnetism is melting compasses, not pushing tectonic plates. The global field will continue its undulating decline and eventual flip possibly tens of thousands of years in the future without any known effect on earthquakes or eruptions. For now, scientists will focus on real-time monitoring of Kamchatka's restless crust and magma chambers, interpreting each signal as a consequence of the ring of fire's ceaseless churn, not the fate of a disintegrating geomagnetic dynamo. A heartfelt thank you to at Sharon Baker 1266 for suggesting this compelling and timely topic. Your curiosity helped shed light on a story that matters deeply to our understanding of Earth's natural systems. If you have a topic you're passionate about or questions you'd like us to explore, drop them in the comments. Your ideas could inspire our next deep dive. If you found this video compelling, be sure to like, share and subscribe for more deep explorations into the forces shaping our planet.